Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SmartCon Developer Track. I'm really excited to be here with everyone. And I want to make sure that today's event is as interactive as possible because we are here live. I fought very hard to make sure that this uh, was a very live track and very interactive track. And so everyone that's watching, if you can do me a little bit of a favor, can you put in the chat where you are watching from? I want to see uh, the places that people are watching from all over the world. Uh, so we've got uh, hello from Amsterdam. Got a few other people here watching live, and I'm just very jazzed to be kicking off this SmartCon developer track. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Stephen Fluin. I am head of developer relations at Chainlink Labs, and uh, my background is really in trying to make developers successful. We've got Pensacola, Florida, Berlin, Paris, France, Thailand. Wow, here, here come the chats. Uh, looks like there's a, a tiny bit of a delay for me. So uh, my name is Stephen Fluin, and I am really excited because my job, I have the coolest job on the planet. I get to worry all day long about trying to make developers more productive and more successful, uh, which is really, really fun because I have an engineering background, uh, but the idea that we can all work together to act as multipliers for each other is very, very cool. And that is part of what we're doing here today. So uh, let me kick off and set expectations for what the SmartCon developer track is that we put together because it's slightly different from the rest of the conference because this is really focused exclusively on the tools and the frameworks and the platforms and the knowledge that developers need to be productive in your day-to-day -day basis across the whole blockchain and smart contract industry. So I've actually presented at a lot of different conferences and organized a lot of different conferences. My biggest year was, I think, 45 conferences in one year. But one of my favorite things that I ended up doing, and this is a little bit naughty, is I liked bringing people together that people didn't think would normally collaborate. And so some of my, my favorite moments from the past are bringing companies like, I don't know, Walmart and Amazon into the same room and getting them to collaborate on technology strategy or American Airlines and Delta or Google and Apple, all these sorts of things. Because what I find is that oftentimes we see each other as uh, these different companies that can't work together. We, we don't want to create community. But when we can push past that, we can all create something that is really, really exciting and really, really amazing. And so that is part of what I'm trying to do uh, with today's developer track is really figure out how can we come together? Because whenever we as developers, whenever we as organizations come together and collaborate and figure out what is the next big thing, what are the challenges that we're struggling with and how can we help each other do better? We all succeed. And so as we're going through the entire track today, I want everyone here to be thinking about this idea and thinking about how can we take the people that are watching, the speakers, the presenters, all these great technologies that our industry has and find ways that we can all work together. How today's going to work is that we've got a couple types of content. We've got some fantastic updates from a lot of the tools and technologies that developers use and love from across the industry. We've got Alchemy, Open Zeppelin, Etherscan, uh, Chainlink, all these sorts of companies. And then we also have a lot of different content that is really focused on uh, developer skill sets. So things like productivity, things like security, things like uh, really understanding some of the most important things you should be worrying about when you're developing for a platform like the EVM. And so as we look at the agenda, you're going to see that we've got uh, developer.smartcontractsummit.io, which is the abbreviated version of the agenda. We're going to have a few talks. And then we're going to have a Q&A with some of those speakers. And we're going to have a few talks. We're going to have a Q&A with some of those speakers. So as you're listening, as you're thinking about all the things that these amazing speakers are sharing with us, try and think about some questions. And then when we get to those sections, that is your opportunity to be interactive. That is your opportunity to be live and engage with these speakers. Because I really think that it's important that we think about an event like SmartCon as a, a place and a time for us to think about these bigger problems, because oftentimes we get sucked into the day-to-day -day of our lives, of our work, and we're just worried about getting our project done. And it's really important for us as developers, especially to reflect and say, okay, am I using the right tools? Am I thinking about these problems in the right way? Am I building collaborations that are going to make us all better? There's also a little bit of a surprise at the end of the day. So I'm a, a big fan of video gaming. I, I love to play video games. Uh, I've spent way too much of my life playing them. And I've even gotten to this thing called speed running. So uh, put, put your, uh, something in the chat if you, if there, you have a favorite video game that you've watched speed running. There's really great events around this, like uh, summer games done quick, awesome games done quick, these sorts of things. And so I had this crazy idea for today of an experimental event where we're going to try and do some developer speed running. So we're going to take some of the principles from video game speed running and we're going to apply it to developers. And hopefully the participants have a lot of fun. Everyone watching has a lot of fun. And hopefully everyone will learn something along the way in terms of like, what are the best ways to be building these things? How can we all be doing faster? 
So definitely stay tuned at 4 p.m. because uh, we're going to be trying this idea of developer speed running. So I'm so excited about this event, but I'm also so excited about the industry overall. And I think it's important for us all to reflect at some of the things that are going on in our industry, because this is actually one of the most exciting industries for developers to be in, in terms of growth, in terms of uh, disruption, in terms of change. And so it's really helpful to have a conference like SmartCon, where you can try and catch up and take a moment and say, okay, what is happening in this crazy, crazy, uh, exciting place that we, we work and live? And so the first thing I want to acknowledge is that I, I think that some really nice things are happening in our industry. Uh, and when I, I say nice things, people are starting to worry about the impact that our industry is having on the world. So when you think about things like proof of uh, work and the migration that a lot of chains are going through uh, over to proof of stake, this is kind of a really exciting thing because we can think about, hey, the work that I'm doing every day, the smart contracts that I'm building, maybe we can do a little bit better. Maybe we can not uh, destroy the planet as much as we were. And so uh, to me, this idea that we as an industry can look at problems and face them head on and solve them is just so, so cool. There's another really cool trend that I think is really important to recognize, which is the rise of these DAOs, right? Decentralized autonomous organizations where the power and control becomes decentralized. And instead of relying on trust in some sort of governing uh, entity, you're actually moving towards autonomous organizations where everyone can be a part of it and there's full transparency and it's based on contracts that have truth. And I think this is a really exciting movement and I, I can't wait to see more and more of this across the industry. I also want to reflect that we're, we're living in a many chain world now, right? We do not just have a single blockchain that we need to worry about. So when I think about this, I think about there's a million or more transactions per day on the Ethereum mainnet right now. Like that is a huge number of transactions. But if you broaden your thinking, you look at all the other chains that are, are popping up, this number goes up hugely. Even if we just look at the top five chains, we're now at over 50 million transactions per day. And that the amount of disruption, the amount of change that's going on across all of these different chains is really, really exciting. It's something that we as developers need to be thinking about and need to be aware of. When you think about this many chain world that we're living in, there's lots of choices for developers and choice can be a really good thing, but it can also be hard because you have to spend effort and you have to do research and you have to be diligent because some of the chains have offered different trade-offs, right? There's chains that are focused on speed. There's chains that are focused on cost. Some that are uh, focused on decentralization. Then there's the entire new concept of L2s where we can roll up transactions in new ways that come with their own benefits and their own drawbacks. And so I think this is actually a really, really exciting world to live in. And I think we've heard yesterday and we're going to hear a lot more today about the way that people think about all of these different chains. But I also want to acknowledge that beyond just living in a world with many, many chains, we're also living in a multi-chain world where our smart contracts have to be more aware of the other chains, right? Imagine thinking about a smart contract that doesn't just live on a single chain, but lives across many, many different chains and using things like messaging, uh, you actually build a better, more capable contract that meets your users' needs across the board. There's also so much innovation going on right now in the frameworks and tooling that we use. And I really see frameworks and tooling as essential to developer productivity and developer outcomes. When we have really good tools, we're able to worry less about the underlying infrastructure and worry more about solving really cool problems. And so the amount of innovations going on in these tools and the amount of change, it's, it's very disruptive, but it's super powerful. If I look back two years ago into the tools that were around, it was much harder to be a smart contract developer and it was much harder to build very, very cool use cases. And so I see more and more companies, even that started two, three or four years ago, moving towards these tools because they, they get to focus on the things that matter to them and the problems that they're solving rather than these underlying issues that just keep getting easier and easier to deal with. I also want to acknowledge that with technologies like Chainlink, we have a new power in our smart contracts, right? We don't have to live in an isolated world that lives only on the blockchain. We can acknowledge and incorporate data that's coming from the outside world. And even more important than data, we can, heart, uh, we can take advantage of capabilities. Our smart contracts can reach into the world and have real world effects. And that's, that's so cool. This is such an exciting industry to be part of. We also have better languages, right? The, the underlying code that we're writing is getting easier to write and better. If you look at Solidity in version 08, we have things like safe math. Right now it's built in. And so you don't need to be worrying about all those challenges. And this is going to mean safer contracts for everybody. It's going to mean better user outcomes. But beyond that, as we look at this multi-chain world that we live in or this many chain world we live in, 
we're actually getting new access to new technologies, right? We're seeing smart contract developers getting more access to state-of-the-art web tools like TypeScript for building their applications, for testing their applications. We see chains that are supporting languages like C and Rust. And this just gives developers more power, more control, more choice, which means that you can build the right thing in the right way at the right time. There's also some challenges that developers need to start thinking about. There's this concept of MEV or minor extractable value, where I can't just naively deploy a smart contract and assume it's gonna execute in the way that I think it will. You have to think about your reliance on the miners of the validators that exist on each chain. You have to think about where are the trusts that I'm creating. If, if there's some sort of extractable value from the order of transactions, that's something that I might have to worry about as a developer. And so as we keep getting these tools that make things easier, the challenge and the burden on us as developers continues to rise as well. One of the last things I want to talk about is the use cases, because we're also seeing an explosion of use cases, right? There's a lot of teams being very, very successful in decentralized finance. I love the passion and focus that the arts and things like NFTs are driving for the world, right? It's driving attention on all the cool things that we're doing, and it's improving the underlying technologies that we're building. There's uh, a lot of chains, a lot of technologies being built for decentralized decision-making, decentralized governance, which is such a cool concept. There's gaming. I'm, as I, I said before, I'm a huge fan of gaming. And so anytime someone can be using smart contract and blockchain technologies to build better games, more exciting, more engaging experiences, that is something that I'm, I'm really all about. And beyond these four, there's, there's a fifth one that I want to mention, which is that I don't actually know the next great use case. Right? The next great use case is going to be someone that is watching this presentation, watching this video, getting started with smart contracts, building something cool, solving a new problem that we haven't even thought about. So this is, this is what we're really, really excited about, why I think uh, being a blockchain developer in our industry is one of the coolest things around. So as we uh, move towards the end of my, my little developer welcome here. Uh, I want everyone to, again, reflect on the place that we're in. I want you to think about how can I be interactive with others because this is our opportunity. When uh, I think about this, and uh, we actually saw this with a, a recent bootcamp that we ran where uh, there's lots of ways of engaging, right? Any day of the week, you can go post on the internet and become part of a community. You can go attend a meetup, you can go create strategy, like uh, you can go create new organizations, new communities, those sorts of things. But unless we're taking time to do that, unless we're taking a pause from our daily lives, like a conference allows us to do, we're not going to be as successful. So I really want everyone here that's watching the developer track here today to really think about engaging as part of this track. So be present. Uh, hopefully you can turn off your email, silence your phone, uh, and pay attention to all the amazing speakers that we've got because they, they've got one of the best summaries of the things that are going on across our industry that I have seen in a while. Uh, use the chat. So I'm seeing tons of chats kind of flowing by questions like, uh, what's the best tutorial for XYZ? So these, these are great things. And there's lots of people to engage with and lots of things that you can learn, right? People are sharing tutorials, talking about uh, the importance and the impact that boot camps have had on them. This is the way that we're all going to get better is by working together. And uh, the chat is a great thing. And then we've got Q&A, as I said, scheduled uh, after each kind of block of speakers. So come with your questions. We'll figure out, uh, take some of the best questions. and We'll make sure that those presenters are engaging and giving back. Um, but I also say, hopefully the conversation does not stop here today. I think that the most successful conferences are the ones where you go back to the office next week. You, you go back to your life and you carry through with you not only the ideas and the inspiration that you got at a conference like this, but also the connections, right? Hopefully you, you connected with someone or you, you found a, a speaker really engaging and you thought their technology was cool. Reach out to them and carry that with you and continue the conversations beyond the event. And this is something we're looking to uh, do better and better at as we, we put this conference together. Um, I have on here, upload your code and notes to GitHub. This is a, a radical one that, that I've seen where every conference, there's a few people that take really, really cool notes. And they either publish those notes as like a blog post or some of the coolest ones is they'll take a tablet and they'll actually draw the things that they've learned. And this is a really, really cool, I think it's like called sketch noting or something like that. Um, this is a, a fantastic way of aggregating and synthesizing all this amazing information in a way that's gonna carry forward and it's gonna continue having an impact in your lives. And because we're developers, GitHub is this fantastic platform for us to share, right? If there's a code sample that you really liked, go and fork it, add it to your 
own organization on GitHub and just be present and be available for others. Because what's going to happen is you're going to take that note, you're going to note that insight or share an insight that you heard, and other people are going to learn from that. Other people are going to continue growing from that. And this is how we keep building on what each other is having, and we're going to keep growing. I'll also say, uh, please send nice tweets. Uh, <laughs> Twitter can, can be a very interesting place sometimes, but we've got the hashtag SmartCon. Uh, and I'll also uh, put it myself out there. Anytime during today, I'm, I'm emceeing the entire day, all the speakers, uh, you can tweet at me at Stephen Fluin, and I will try and call out uh, some of the most interesting tweets, things that people have learned, and we'll reflect together on this experience and on this journey that we are going on. Because again, going back to what we were saying to get earlier, we are gonna be doing better together. And so with that, I think we're gonna move on to the main session. So uh, I think we're, we're about ready to get started with this track. I'm really excited. So uh, let's, let's go together. Uh, the first session up today is going to be hearing about what's new in Chainlink uh, from Patrick and Melody. I think a lot of people uh, know about Patrick uh, and Melody. She has some fantastic cats and dogs. And if you ever get the opportunity to meet her, uh, definitely ask her about those. So with that, uh, we're going to pass it over into the first speaker of the day. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, it's really great to see everyone.